Hey, welcome to module four. You will be spending most of your time dealing with the team single source project this week. You're actually going to publish some output, which is exciting, I think. Um, I most want to help prepare you for the work that you're going to do related to publishing this week. So let's get started. I want to start by reminding you this project is typical of those in industry where you have to work with existing content created by other people in different formats or systems. It's messy business. I don't expect to see anything like perfection from your team. Here's how I'm going to evaluate your work that you submit at the end of the week. Of course, I'll be reviewing your Flare project files. Those are going to include what are called builds for the targets that demonstrate your proof of concept of single sourcing content for tech company. Your builds are going to show two PDFs and also an online knowledge base that is built from the same content. In order to understand what you've built and why, I'll be carefully reviewing your cover letter. Because this is a proof of concept rather than a total reworking of all Zen 4 content or all tech company content, what that company is going to want is to understand what you've done and what you haven't done and why. Finally, I'll review your team's Slack channel to assess how well you communicated with each other during the project. You can view the rubric for the single source project on Canvas to see how I describe different levels of performance for each of these. This final phase of the project requires your team to complete four interrelated tasks. First, you complete transformation of a subset of the Zen 4 server content, much like you did last week. Second, you'll design targets for publishing that content, one for print, one for online. Third, you'll develop each of those targets by creating what are called their TOCs in Flare. And fourth, you'll build those targets so I can view them. I'll go through each of these tasks in just a little more detail on the following slides. You should build off the work you did in the previous module. Use the feedback you received on the topics you rewrote for the topic-based and structured authoring tutorial, also for the topic type templates that your team submitted for your content model. I've recommended that you focus on Chapter 1 and the Product Support Appendix in Flare because they have the most obvious overlap for producing the three target publications. After all, what you're proving to tech company is the value of single sourcing. Your assigned reading for this week is a great way to help you think about how much redundancy you need between print and online publications. The only requirements for the reworked Zen 4 content you deliver are going to be listed here. Your content should apply DITA inspired structure like you learned about last week. That should include the use of short descriptions which should appear in meta descriptions for each of your topic files. Your content should include keywords. Let me show you quickly how this works. I've updated this portion of the video because Flare 22 made some changes to how this is done and I didn't realize that unfortunately. So here I am in Flare. What I'm going to do is open up a file. All right, there are a number of things that I could do to clean this topic up. So for example, this link that was created in a PDF to go from one topic to the next I got rid of. This initial tag here is called a bookmark, which you can tell if you hover over it. I'll get rid of it because we probably don't need it. Now you can see here this first sentence was designed, has been added uh, to the original content by me. It's supposed to be a short description and the way that this used to work, I needed this inside the topic. But with Flare 22, that's no longer necessary. So I'm going to delete it. Now I've got it on my clipboard. I'm going to go up here to the display properties for this file. And it opens this form, this window that's got meta tags. If, you, if it doesn't open for you automatically in this tab, click on meta tags. You'll see that I've already added some tags for you. 
Let's look at the short description one since that's the one that I was just discussing and the short description that I already have in my on my clipboard, I'm going to simply paste here. That's going to add this content as metadata. And out of there, uh, you'll see I get kind of an error here. So uh, I messed up by hitting yes. I probably should have hit no, but no big deal. It just reverted back to the file that I had uh, initially and where I had not deleted these things yet. So I'll just go ahead and delete them again. And I can delete that short description from the topic itself now because it's in the metadata. All right, save, 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 save. The next thing I want to show you how to do is to add another piece of metadata. We could have done this while I was in there a moment ago, but we'll do it separately. So we click on that properties. We go to the author meta tag set. This is something many of you put in your spreadsheets as something to add. So I've already taken care of that here. So we open this and we click on value. You'll see I've already added your names in here. I'll make sure that I take credit for this one. And now anytime someone in the organization, probably not a user, but someone in the organization needs to find out who wrote that topic so they can ask a question or tell me about an update, they know who the author of that topic was. The last thing I want to talk about then is keywords. You'll see in green highlighting that there are already some keywords added here. If I right click, you'll see it's called an index keyword and I could edit it. And if you hover your cursor over it, it's going to say keyword, right? Here's how you add one yourself. You will have some listed in your spreadsheet. You can either highlight the the term itself that's your keyword or you can simply place your cursor right before that word. Go up to the insert tab, look at the ribbon. There are a bunch of links that you could provide here. You could provide a URL, a cross reference, which would be great, but we're not going to try and do that. The bookmark, I've already removed one of those. There are some other things that you can add, for example, uh, you could add a file. Um, you could add a link to a glossary for a term. What we're looking for is this gold key, which stands for keyword. If I press it, you'll see that damage appears in green in front of the term damage. And that's all there is to it. I've created a keyword with that term by inserting a link. So now when people search, when users search your content, damage with the term damage, they're much more likely to get this particular topic in their results. And if you haven't tried this yet, you should know that you can preview a specific topic. So in the HTML5 or web output or web target, this is what you would see now. You can also look at the PDF target. and it will produce a PDF for you, or at least a preview of what the PDF would look like. All right, that's what all I've got for you today. Hang in there. Your online knowledge base should be searchable, and your print publication should include a cover and a table of contents. There are a multitude of additional changes possible. For example, reworking cross-references and variables or adding conditions, snippets, micro content, but you should pursue these only if time allows. You've got to design the Zen 4 content with master CSS style sheets, not local formatting. There'll be a default master CSS style sheet when you import the project into Flare from Central. 
It was automatically created to mimic the design of the frame maker books used to produce the original publications, which means the same style sheet applies to both PDF and HTML targets. The import also created a collection of page layout styles for PDF targets. Honestly, there's a lot of mess here in terms of design, and there simply isn't time to fix all of it. Although you might create your own master style sheet and page layouts, I don't encourage you to do that. Simply tweak what's already there. You could spend a significant amount of time just designing. But design is not what's most important to tech company about your proof of concept. To demonstrate your ability to work with master CSS style sheets and flair, I would like to see you make at least two modifications. They're simple ones. First, tweak paragraph styles for the PDF targets only. You know, do something like increase legibility with a larger font size. Second, do something with first level heading style for the online output for the HTML5 target. In both of these cases, you want to ensure to make the change in only one target. In other words, you'll end up with different styles for level one headings in your print versus your online pubs. Because this is so messy, let me try and show you what you're going to see here. We're in the Content Explorer. We're going to look at Resources. Remember I told you about all the page layouts? Look at this mess. This is why I'm recommending that you just leave it alone um, and instead, and look here also with table styles, there are a whole lot of different ones. So let's just work on the main CSS file. We open it up. You can see I've already been in here. Um, I'm looking at the P tag, right? That style class for P. If we look at the font that is associated with it, I must have already changed it to Calibre. I think yours will probably say Times New Roman, but you'll see when you click on the box that your you can choose whatever font family you want. I've chosen Calibre. I know from trying this already that changing P alone did not actually institute the change that I want to see in my HTML output. One of the things you should realize that I'm working on the default medium, but in fact, you have two mediums here. You're going to work on print, but you're also, I mean, you're going to work on the HTML5, but also the print output or the print target. So if we want the styles to be different, then that means that we need to give them different settings. So I've got Calibre for online, and I've got Times New Roman or Serif for print. And you'll see down below, it shows you a preview of what that style should look like when you actually build the output. Take a look at all of these P styles here. Um, this truly importing files from another program into Flare truly creates a mess. Um, you should know that, but you also uh, should save your time this week for the most important things that you need to change. Let's look at a file, a topic file, and see how these changes play out. So this particular file I haven't really edited yet, but you'll see that it's medium is default, which should be HTML. I hadn't saved yet. As soon as I saved my CSS changes, you'll see that that first paragraph now is a sans serif typeface or font family. If you hover over those bars, you see that bullets didn't change because Somehow, the inherited styles are not actually working. Figuring out how to fix all of that is truly time-consuming. So what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm just going to change bullet one style in my HTML5 to Calibre and in my print to Serif. And then when I go back to my topic file, What you should see is now it 
the bullets have also been changed to the sans serif typeface in the preview. Do the best you can. You're also going to build off the information grouping you did to create a content model last week when you rework Zen4 content for each of these three target publications. Here, I'm in the Project Explorer in Flare. When you open the Targets folder, you're going to see two targets already there, one for an HTML or online pub and one for a PDF. We'll have to create a second one for the second PDF later. But first, let's see what's in the TOCs folder. There are two existing TOCs. Let's open the HTML5 one and build the content and its organization in the online knowledge base first. There's a single topic file already there. Its file name is actually home, but the title that shows here is Zen4 Knowledge Base. Let's go to the Content Explorer then drag and drop topics into the TOC file. That's how you associate topic content with that specific target for publication. So I know I want the system and architectural overview content. I'm going to show the hierarchy of topics by indenting it under the home topic. I want the technical overview. I'll use the arrows or drag to put the topic in the position where I want it in the hierarchy of topics. I want the PMM LED topic to be subordinate, so I'll use the arrow to position it. I keep adding and arranging topics until I have every piece of content I want in the knowledge base publication or the knowledge base TOC. Remember that the frame maker import created two folders for topics based on the fact that the content was originally in two separate print publications. So make sure you locate all the topics you want to appear in your online publication from both of those folders. You'll build a TOC for each PDF target as well. I'll go ahead and rename this file as it's easier to recognize as the TOC for the hardware installation if I change the name. When you open it, you'll see two existing files. Cover is the file that already existed for the print publication. Contents is the topic file that will create an actual table of contents page in your print publication. Otherwise, you do the same dragging and dropping of topics. It's important to understand the same topic files can be used multiple times in different TOCs within the same project. That's all up to you. When you're done, you can build your targets. Let's open the HTML5 target and I'll show you some of the settings that you can adjust. You tell Flare which topic file to treat as the home page. You need to select which TOC to use for this specific target because you're going to have multiple TOCs to choose from within the project. You tell Flare which style sheet to associate with the target, if you have more than one. You change the screen layout of your site by changing what's called the skin. I have top navigation selected. Now let's open the PDF target and review some of its settings. Again, you have to tell Flare which TOC, which page layouts, which style sheet to use with that target. You can review variables for the target. You can set specific options for PDF output here. Many options. Once you're done with the settings, you're ready to build. It takes just a bit, but after the publication output is built, Flare offers you reports about errors like broken links that you can review. You can build a target multiple times to test the output. Note that all of those builds are going to be available for review by me through Central. That means you need to make sure I can tell which of those builds I should consider the final ones, either by deleting the earlier builds or naming the right build in a way that designates it as the final. You will be very busy with the single source project this week, but don't forget um, to capture artifacts for your web portfolio. Um, you want to collect maybe specific topics that you rewrote, especially if you're interested in showing that you know how to use Flare and you know a little bit about Dita. Um, it really doesn't matter if you 
capture screenshots of the knowledge base that you created, whatever it is that you think will help you demonstrate that you have the skills and the knowledge that employers are looking for. This could be different for different students. You don't have to show only complete deliverables. You can show process things. Um, but make sure that you do this, that you capture these things now while you have access to Flare. That will go away, obviously, at the end of the semester. All right, use the assignments channel, but you certainly can always schedule a meeting with me. I'll meet with you individually or as a team if you have questions and concerns that I can help you with while you're dealing with the project. Just let me know. All right, good luck.